Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 26, 2024. Well, I hope everyone had a good rest. Yesterday was another wild day in the market of whipsawing prices. This morning we have um, U.S. futures are soaring this morning um, ahead of the um, core PCE numbers, which of course is the Fed's favorite number. But before we get into that, how about we take a look at what happened overnight? First off, we have Asian markets that were mostly higher last night, but with modest gains. And the Nikkei continues to sell off on its eighth straight day uh, down uh, down uh, only 202 points um, last night. Uh, most everything else was just real modest gains like um, Hong Kong was up 16 points at 0.10%. So pretty, uh, pretty modest on that front. When we take a look at European markets, European markets are also um, in uh, gr the green across the board. DAX being up 0.27%, FTSE up 0.70% and the CAC of doing the best up 0.91%. But again, more of that modest as they wait on U.S. inflation data. Here in the United States, we've got all kinds of bullishness going on with the Dow being up 0.59% or 237 points. Um, S&P 500 up 42 points or 0.77% and NASDAQ is up 191 points so far this morning um, up over 1%. Let's take a look at what we have going on in oil. If we take a look at oil, oil been a really interesting trade here um, lately. Uh, whoops, let's take a look at XLE. It has been really volatile and although Yesterday we had a pretty good surge to the upside that softened by the end of the day and this morning we have oil down. Oil futures are lower by 0.28 per um, 28 cents at $78 a barrel. Brent is down 30 cents at 82.7 a barrel and natural gas is essentially flat here this morning after a rough day again yesterday. When you take a look here at XLE, it's hard to square what's going on because we see these oil producers had a really good surge yesterday. So that's going to be something to be keeping an eye on. Perhaps those oil producers will uh, continue that process today. If we take a look at our precious metals, boy, gold had a really rough day yesterday, being down more than $50 a share or $50 an ounce um, on the day, uh, pushed back up before the close. And now, strangely, this morning is up $19.40 an ounce, whipsawing back to the upside. Silver also had a terrible day, but silver not recovering as well. Silver gapping lower yesterday and still looking a little bit lower this morning. Copper um, getting a little bit of a bump here this morning, um, not quite two cents up. Platinum and palladium are still looking lower after rough days yesterday in those markets. If we take a look at cryptos this morning, cryptos had a rough day yesterday and this morning they are soaring as well. Crypto bouncing up 2,529 points this morning, uh, dollars per coin, um, really uh, pushing and we're mostly green across the board. Um, on some pretty rough selling that was in there um, in, in a lot of places in those markets yesterday. If we take a look at um, uh, bond yields this morning, we have um, U.S. bonds kind of interesting in here. They are, uh, the two-year bond is at 4.42%, the 10-year bond is at 4.24%, and the 30-year bond at 4.48%. So kind of a mix. Uh, ten, some of the 10 years are up just slightly. Some are down. 30-year bonds um, are higher as a whole on the week. So we'll want to just be keeping a close eye on that. So what does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video.
Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. Happy Friday. I hope you're all having a good morning. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain a little information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Remember, let's shake off some bias and let's just take a good look at these charts. First off, when we take a look at the diamonds, this pullback here is obviously pretty rough, a uh, pretty substantial pullback after just shooting straight up here in the market. Well, we pulled it back pretty hard. And the interesting thing in here to be paying attention to on the diamonds is we're still holding this upside trend. We had separated ourselves so far from that trend. Yesterday we popped in here stretched up really big and then gave a lot of it back, the majority of it back, um, but still held on to positive prints and to the close. So as you can see at the close of the day, we were just barely above this little resistance in the chart. And here in the pre-market, we're trying to pump that on higher. So where do we go from here? Well, the first uh, step, if the bulls can find good data today and inspiration, I'm gonna once again suggest breaking back through that little resistance there will be the first step. We did it yesterday and then came right on up into here and we rejected that area here in the chart. So looking at this today, same thing is true. See if we can pop that first and then popping on through into that area of resistance is where we want to go. After that point, then we're going to have to deal with kind of this bearish uh, pattern up here in the chart and see if we can start pushing through some of these levels in here and getting us back up in that area. We do want to um, be reminded with such a strong pullback in here, um, we could uh, literally in, in any kind of a rally end up placing some kind of a lower high in that chart. So we do want to watch carefully there if we can't get enough inspiration to push to the upside. And there was a reason that this was a concern yesterday and I'll show you that in a little bit. If we take a look at the SPY, however, SPY has gone bearish. SPY um, had a nice push to the upside, ended up finishing um, lower on the day, um, reversing and breaking support levels here in the chart. And I had suggested that possibility that we could come down here, fill that gap and test that support. That's essentially what we ended up doing. Uh, finding a little bit of buying going on today, we're trying to push back up. So watch this carefully. If the bulls can find that inspiration looking up here, we'll see if we can break through that area once again. And if we can do that, then we've got to deal with this resistance that we, re we rejected yesterday to see whether or not we can push on through there. Pushing up through that area actually gets us into a little bit of a gap here and pushes us up um, into this downtrend. So we'll want to be watching those areas in the chart if this downtrend were to continue and we are officially in a, a corrective downtrend with the lower high and a lower low. So as we rally back up, we have to be a little bit suspicious and be careful here about really chasing heavily back into the market because if we run into this area and reject it, that's going to be a problem for us here in the market. We also want to consider the fact that we did fail our 50 day moving average yesterday. We're trying to reclaim it here this morning. Watch carefully for that. Now, if the um, bears were to find inspiration here today, well, I, I laid out some of those yesterday, and as you can see, um, possibly filling that gap or completing the fill of that gap, taking out that low would be the first step. Then we might be looking at some support down in here on the chart sell on down and after that there's a very big level of price support in here but it would be all the way down here and that would be a major pain move in the market certainly possible with economic data like we have this morning but um, probably unlikely on a Friday if we take a look at our QQQ um, similar thing here QQQ has done kind of the double uh, double problem lower high lower low lower high lower low um, continued that um, selling yesterday after trying to push back up. You can see we came down in here, tested that support level in the chart. So if the bulls can find inspiration today, one of the first things we need to do is see if we can push back up in here 
uh, where we rejected yesterday we pushed and hit this high left that little gap alone we'll have to see if we can push back up through that and then we're going to be up into here for that next level and as we move back up we've got a downtrend in here that we're going to have to deal with in that chart so we're going to run into a bit of a double whammy the question is whether or not we'll get enough momentum in the market to make that occur so watch that carefully breaking through there of course then we've got a little gap up in here that we could fill and then we start um, maybe that process of seeing whether or not we can hold in that um, choppy zone range up in here that we've seen before now if the bears were to find inspiration well it's not hard to see here if we um, um, break back down below that little support level the next area down here is right in that area of the chart and you can see that's a pretty substantial support area in the chart and i would expect some kind of um, a hold or bounce in that area but if it were to fail you can see the next area of support is going to be the underneath side of that um, support area so could be um, really painful selling if we were to move down through that area and that rotation out of tech continues let's take a look um, also our moving averages here in our 50-day moving average we add another layer of complication in here if we rally back we're going to be running into the underneath side of that 50 day moving average right up in here. So watch that carefully. This could easily set up the next opportunity to short the QQQ. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM had the best of the day yesterday surged up nicely and although it did pull back it didn't pull back all that much maintained some gains here on the day so iwm looking good matter of fact i'm going to get rid of that red square it's driving me crazy um, um as you can see holding in here in that pattern and this is a very very bullish pattern our next level in here that we'll want to be watching in the chart is going to be right up in this area in that area to see whether or not we can break through if we can break through that then we really do have a chance of getting some new all-time highs here in the Russell and this rotation that we've seen in the market certainly does give you some hope for that so watch that carefully here um, uh, the bulls are definitely in control when it comes to IWM so breaking through up here then we're going to deal with those resistance levels clear over there to the left to see if we can reach up and test some of those high levels in that resistance. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration today, the first step would be breaking back down below here, breaking below that level. Then we start looking at some of these big, these gaps that we left behind in the chart for a possible test but right now no particular worries there and once again our moving averages here we're still very very separated from our 50-day moving average so right now we're holding up really well it would if we were to fall um, there could be some big point moves to the downside but right now we're holding in there nice on iwm let's take a look at our vix Interestingly enough, in the VIX, the VIX yesterday had pulled back in the morning, came back down, but then at the end of the day, surged back up. So we ended up closing the VIX above this major downtrend here in the chart. Now we've got lots of bullishness coming in this morning in the pre-market. We'll see if that can hold after the core PCE number. But right now I would suggest that this is probably going to pull back. The question as always is remember when we move through these stages and we make these higher lows, that's where the real selling can come into place. So as we pull back, watch that carefully. We need to see this little upside trend be broken now to the downside if we're going to relieve um, this pressure on selling so watch that carefully this upside trend will be pretty important as a matter of fact i'm just going to go ahead and draw that in there because that's uh, an area that we're really going to want to be paying attention to we need to see that vix coming back down remember as the vix stays up here um, for option traders all options are going to cost you more money um, as, as we see that implied volatility going up in the market. Let's take a look at our T2122. Our T2122 indicator, well, we whipsawed here quite a lot um, as well. Um, 
at the high point of the day, our T2122 was right up about here. So we were stretching up toward that bearish reversal zone very, very quickly. And then the selling came in and boy, it came in pretty hard, pulling us back down closer to the middle of this range. And this morning we're getting this big pump up here in the pre-market. So um, if we can find bullish inspiration in the day to day and hold on to this pre-market bullishness, then there certainly is upside opportunity here for um, the chart. We will, I think, if we push really hard, we're going to top out up here pretty quickly in T2122. We came close to that yesterday um, of pushing this up into that reversal zone. So watch that carefully if we get really excited to the upside. Downside, um, well, we've got a, uh, just a little bit more space to move to the downside if the bears were to find inspiration today. So one thing this chart tells me right now is we should be prepared for some big point moves. It could be um, uh, big, um, big get to the upside, big to the downside, or even some really big whipsawing in the market. So be really careful with those knee jerk reaction trades first thing in the morning because they can claw that uh, price action right back really fast in a market like this. If we take a look at our T2108, well, our T2108 held up okay. It did pull back a lot from where it was at the high of the day, but still hanging in there and doing pretty good um, overall. So as you can see, um, setting here on some support, we do have this little bit of a downtrend, but with that bullishness we see this morning, I'm guessing we're going to pop right through that as long as it holds through the economic data this morning. We do have to remind ourselves that we um, are still just slightly below some of this um, really frothy area up here. When we push up into these ranges, it's rare that we can hold it. Uh, very long so kind of keep that in mind if we were to stretch right back up here then we could see um, some of that selling come back in but watch that closely our t2107 very much the same pulled back sharply from where it was at the high of the day but i don't see any problem here bulls are still largely in control on this little downside uh, trend here but we've got good support in this chart and we're holding up fine here on T2107. On our T2101, here's where I was suggesting to everyone as we were racing to the upside, be careful because we saw the breadth falling yesterday. So as we were racing to the upside, the breadth of the market was coming down, which meant there was no momentum in that move to the upside. It was a knee jerk reaction trade. The momentum wasn't following through. In fact, what it almost kind of looked like is what was happening is as retail traders were chasing to the upside institutions were selling to those retail traders that ended up reversing it back down on the day. So the question is really going to be, can we hold this pre-market pop here this morning um, in the, with these numbers? Are we going to continue to see that rotation out of tech driving us right back down? Can't, I can't tell you what that answer is, but um, we'll want to watch this pretty closely because if we see a big popping rally today and that breadth continues to show that we're weakening on that momentum, that's going to be a problem for us holding as we run back to the top. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at um, our economic calendar here for today. And what I've been talking about here quite a bit is that economic calendar. And unfortunately, I didn't get that prepared here. So our economic calendar today, we've got personal incomes and outlays here this morning that we'll wanna be paying attention to. And that's that core PCE number that's the favored for the Fed. And you can see in here, personal income, they're looking for that to decline by um, a tenth. Um, the personal consumption, they're looking for that to increase by a tenth. And the headline number here, which is everyone, what everyone's gonna be paying attention to, is that year over year number, and they're looking for a one tenth decline in that core PCE. So watch that closely. Um, bit, uh, misses in here, if we were to come in lower, market's gonna celebrate. If we were to come in higher, well, 
that would be um, possibly a reason that the bears might uh, attack again. So watch carefully here on this number this morning. After that, we're going to have consumer sentiment and, you know, a 66 rating of consumer sentiment is awful. <laughs> it's awful sentiment. And um, what they're suggesting here is it's going to stay flat. I think it's they're not really sure what's going to happen here. Be really careful if we happen to miss on this to the lower side. Um, that would be another reason for the bears um, if we happen to see that sentiment come in weaker than 66. Um, after that, we've got a Baker Hughes rig count, and then we're free and clear for the day, except for some earnings. Let's take a look at those earnings this morning. I created just a little bit of, because I'm not doing a, a blog today. Um, there you go. There are the notable earnings for this uh, for this morning. There are no notable earnings this afternoon, so you can grab a screenshot of that um, and see if you can... Um, um, go through those and see what's happening um, on the day here. Um, I did see, just see a, a flash uh, BMY came through um, here just re just a few moments ago, and it looks like they are producing well here this morning on their reports. Let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to grow. And I apologize yesterday, guys, I for two days in a row, I haven't been able to answer those. We were really, really busy in the open house um, that we conducted the last couple of days. Thank you so much to everyone who came to the open house. I hope you saw something that uh, was useful to you and um, could be helpful to your trading. Please um, um, stay in touch with us. Um, if you chose not to become a, um, a member of the room, and I certainly understand, I wouldn't expect um, me to be, um, you know, for everyone. Um, I, but I want to wish everyone that attended the best of success in their trading. Um, let's take a look at. Um, some of these stocks that could be setting up. But remember guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in this market because of the potential of these big whipsaws. So taking a look at some of these stocks, um, first off, um, there is a theme kind of going on here of uh, defensive sector stocks looking pretty good and setting up in the market. Now, defensive sector tends to be those old boring companies, the consumer staple kind of things that everyone needs. When the market starts getting a little bit nervous, it's pretty normal to see those things kind of perk up and hang in there. So keep an eye on some of those. And you guys know that I've been mentioning Walmart here for some time and there's been plenty of opportunity. Nice little entry there into a trade, entry there, entry there. And you can see a possible entry coming here into Walmart again for that push to the upside. And again, some of those defensive stocks looking pretty good here in the market. So keep an eye on that. We saw things like um, Hershey. Hershey making some nice moves here yesterday. Again, the pop and fall that we had yesterday in the market also affected in Hershey's, but you can see trying to show some bullishness here, uh, there in that chart looking really good. Again, a consumer de defensive. Kroger is setting up in here again after breaking through resistance and resting back onto this support. Watch that closely. Um, we can look at uh, things. Well, Colgate um, reporting today. This has been bullish for a long, long time, but um, it still has that potential to move on higher. Um, KHC, 
HC coming around out of a bottom, setting up a nice bullish pattern. It tried to pop yesterday, and once again, that sell off in the market pulled us back. But you can see pre market bullishness coming in there. So, a lot of these defensive sector stocks are starting to show some signs that there's a rotation um, into them looking for a little bit of safety in the market and a strong dividend yield. If we take a look at telecommunications, that's another place that you might want to take a look. AT&T had a really good pop yesterday, ended up pulling back um, as the market sold. But as you can see in here, nice little upside trend going, a very big dividend payer in the market. AT&T showing some strength. I would keep a close eye on that. And Verizon, even though Verizon reported badly here, uh, Verizon bouncing up strongly um, every day since the um, since its report pushing back up. Now, I'd be a little bit suspicious of this one. As we pushed up here, we we're finding some resistance in that chart. I would watch carefully for the chance that that might roll back over. But we are certainly seeing uh, some of those uh, telecommunication companies show us some strength. And it really is because of those big dividend yields, I think, that is helping uh, them to show some strength um, overall, because I think folks are looking for a little bit of of um, safety in the market. We can take a look at utilities and we can see the same kind of thing. Now utilities is not something or known for these big point moves or anything like that in the market, but you can see the bullishness that has been setting up here in the utilities or banging our head against some resistance here in the chart. But we've seen quite a few of those utility stocks showing some signs of strength. Let's take a look at some of the energy out there. Stocks like ExxonMobil had a really good day yesterday, surging back up. And if you take a look at this, there's an upside trend in that chart holding. The question is whether or not we can break back through this resistance. We've struggled with this area up here quite a bit. So um, watch that carefully. If this were to pop through up here and hold, that's going to be a pretty interesting chart to be paying attention to. But I would not be at all surprised if we find this resistance and we either consolidate right up in here or even pull back again. Keep an eye on that. But there are stocks out there like uh, FANG, F-A-N-G, um, that um, have had really good upside um, um, potential in the chart. Coming back here toward that trend, we'll watch that closely. Unfortunately, the short term is looking a little bit uncertain, and I would watch this carefully. Any rally back up could run us into some price resistance, and I'm not really confident that this these oil swings that we're seeing here is showing us stability. In fact, what I think we might be seeing is that um, that uncertainty that's creeping up in the market based on how the consumer is feeling. So watch that carefully. We could end up making a head and shoulders top here on FANG on those, but there are so many of them coming up out of the bottom. How about in the drug area of the market? Boy, we saw we have seen some nice moves in that drug area. Take a look at Johnson & Johnson. Nice push here to the upside. There's that pattern that I love so much. We push up, we break through some resistance, we pull back to hold that trend and support, and then pop. Um, right on through we go. So we've got J&J &J coming up. We just looked at BMY that was looking good in here, setting up that higher low and now stretching through on its earnings report. We've got Pfizer. You guys know I've been talking about Pfizer. It had a good day yesterday, but once again, pulled back a lot of that um, yesterday um, on that selling. But this is a really nice pattern here in this chart after breaking through resistance. Probably still needs some rest, but we're seeing quite a few of these drug makers um, really coming back around, showing some signs of strength. Not a drug maker, but one of those old staple companies, uh, Procter & Gamble, has been banging its head against this resistance here in the chart. Notice that the lows have been higher all along here. So I'd keep an eye on Procter & Gamble for the potential of a big breakout here 
on that if we can get some bullishness going in the market. So watch that carefully. Now other places in the market not looking so good. If we take a look at Google, boy Google had a really rough day yesterday breaking down through some support levels in here. Any rally back up into this I would be watching for the opportunity short. Google had some news um, chat GTP came out with a search GTP and it really had an impact here on Google yesterday. So watch that carefully on Google. We'll take a look at Apple. Um, Apple holding in there on price support. And this is one of the best of the breed right now in um, the tech giants. It's still holding in there nicely. But when we look at stocks like Meta, boy, that's not a good sign there on Meta breaking to a new low. So lower highs, lower lows. Um, we have a little bit of support right in here, but you could see easily how this could move on down. Any rally back, I would be watching for a potential short AMD really bearish here moving to the downside once again any rally back now i would be watching for a potential short in amd we take a look at nvidia nvidia continued to fade yesterday but finally found some buyers in there after hitting a support level bouncing back up but we'll want to be watching this closely we not only have a downtrend here to be paying attention to but we have a downtrend here so any rally back into this resistance area of the chart could set up that next opportunity short in NVIDIA. So a lot of the big techs struggling in here quite a bit as that rotation out continues. And we're seeing good rotation into things that uh, like Caterpillar. Caterpillar showing that um, uh, downturn break here. We pushed through, pulled back, and yesterday had a really good day bouncing back up. So I'd keep an eye on Caterpillar. I would keep an eye on John Deere. Really beautiful upside move occurred there yesterday, holding on to some price support in the chart. Keep an eye on the Deere. Boeing, not so much. Boeing still struggling with an image problem here quite a bit. And it's justifiable that it's struggling with that image problem. Um, but watch that closely here. Um, um, that opportunity, if it does pop through this resistance up here, could um, really set up some upside opportunity there. So quite a lot of things going on. There's longs, there's shorts to be had here in the market. We're going to have to be really, really watchful and careful. It's a stock pickers market for sure with a lot of volatility. So if you're finding yourself being chopped to pieces in this market, slow down your trading. Be more diligent and thoughtful about the trades that you do take so that you're not continuing that process and getting your account chopped up. Um, in markets like this. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for uh, listening all week. I appreciate it. I'll see you right back here, bright and early Monday morning. Have a great weekend, everyone.